All right, guys, two minutes. Let me know if you can hear me. Yes, you can. All right. Sweet. One minute, 20 seconds. Loud and clear. All right, guys. Fasten your seatbelts. We are going to be kicking off soon. starting in 50 seconds depends what time of the day Rolf in the morning coffee <laughs> oh right there I'm just drinking water right now so uh, yeah nothing too exciting all right guys we're kicking off in 27 seconds Looks like everyone's coming in. Plenty of coffee. Yeah, I need that stuff. I'm telling you. All right. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, blast off. <laughs> And hello everybody! Welcome to Live from Lockdown, episode number 56. I believe I got it right. Yep, 56. I just double checked. Be like, you know, doing a big concert and you're like, Hello Cleveland! And you're in Minnesota. But, you know, that has happened. I have heard stories uh, about that. But anyway, it's great to see all you guys. So here we are more than a year later. We never thought that we'd be doing this that long, but we're live from lockdown where all of us come together during this crazy time and we unite around Photoshop and art. So I see a lot of regulars there in the house. Uh, a lot of people I saw earlier on, Ray L was saying, or Ray L was saying, they never missed an episode. They were late once, but um, well, that. That's awesome, um, and I know there's a lot of other people. I don't believe Tracy's missed any, or Stuart Braithwaite. I think he might have missed one, Rod Shelley, Klaus, like a lot of people there that never miss him are here every week, the regulars. And if you're new, these regulars will make you feel welcome. This is the kindest, uh, nicest people here on the internet. There's no trolls here. In fact, if there are, Bruce boots them out, and you might see Bruce there, Bruce Picknell. He's our moderator. He carries a iron fist for uh, spammers and he boots them out, so um, don't even bother trying to spam. However, he has a, another duty that he loves to do and that's to bring everybody drinks and meals. So get your drink orders in right now. Bruce is in the house and uh, he's going to get you all your drinks and make sure everybody's comfortable. Put your seats back. Make sure your tray tables are in the upright position. Although I'm not sure how you're going to put your drink there if it's that way. Fasten your seatbelts because we're about to take off. And today we're going to be looking at some compositing in Photoshop. I In the email I said kit bashing, um, which is just another term. It, it's called composite. It's kind of funny actually. There's various ways of doing everything in Photoshop as well as different names for everything. So if you're maybe a photographer, you're going to call it compositing. If you're in the visual effects world, you're going to call it kit bashing. If you're in the design world, you're going to call it design, I guess. So basically what it is, it's the art of coming up with a concept art. You know, kit bashing is actually just taking photos and throwing them together, coming up some kind of concept art. Compositing is, you know, the whole process and then also, you know, we take it into a final piece. So let me flip over to my screen right now so we can uh, see that. And uh, let's get going. And yeah, good suggestion there, Robin. Um, everybody smash that like button into dust. 
if you don't mind. I see we only have two likes. Come on, guys. Wow, we have almost 150 people here and only two likes. Okay, so we, we definitely need to see some more likes. Um, photo, photographic artist. Yeah, that's that's uh, Andrew saying that. Yep. All right, guys. So I see that uh, is starting to happen. People are dusting that like button. Awesome. Good to see your capacity and Cheryl John. Um, oh, and David Morin as well. Lots of regulars there. Okay, let me flip you guys over so you can see me and the screen. And I'm just kind of giving a little bit of time. People are coming in. All right, it looks like we're um, still got people coming in pretty quickly, but we're going to kick off. So this is a composite I made earlier on of the, um, this is actually how the world ends. You know, it's not going to be from 5G. It's going to be from a giant kitty that's going to come and just basically stomp us all out. That's, that's it. That's the end of the world. All right, so we're not doing that one, although that would be kind of fun. But what I figured we'd do is we're going to just start with this mountain and uh, let's create some kind of a, a futuristic uh, scene. You know, uh, maybe the world's flooded and we're just kind of, you know, a la 2012, I think was the movie. And, uh, you know, let's just see what happens. So we're just... If you know what this mountain is, actually, I think it's the Matterhorn, isn't it? If, yeah, but just pretend you don't know because we're going to switch it up. So this is going to be kind of live and uh, we'll just, just see what happens. So one of the things I like to do is start with a, you know, a background plate. This is probably a little bit wide. It should be like a 16.9 format, but we'll crop it down to a 16.9 as, as we're working because in that way we can just kind of see what part of the image we want to keep. And so I'm just going to throw this in and see, you know, this is something I grabbed from Adobe Stock. Notice that logo is still there. I'm just going to drag it in here and just see, is this going to work? So we're going to drag it in and just kind of looking for ideas. Now, obviously, it's not to scale because this is uh, low resolution because it's a, a comp. I'll show you guys how to do all that in a sec. And, you know, maybe... Yeah, maybe this is something we can use. So I don't license the image until I figure out something I can use. So what if we put it down here? And uh, I'm just going to make a really rough cutout just to kind of see if it's going to work. So just grab one of the selection tools here. It has to be one of the magic selection tools. Choose select subject. Let's see if it cuts it out. No, terrible job. All right. So let's use the object selection tool. Drag it around the city. Do we get something a little bit better? Yeah, it's better. Let's hold the shift key. At this point, I'm not really trying to get anything great. I just want to just kind of see, is this going to even work? You know, we're going to match the uh, angles and stuff like that. So let's just hit click the layer mask. And you know what? Yeah, that looks like that could actually work. Sweet. I like that. All right. So um, now we know that's going to work. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to license that image. Now, of course, you know, you guys can use Adobe Stock, which is what I'm doing here. Um, and if you don't want to use Adobe Stock, there's another app I found here, and I'm not sponsored by them or, or Adobe Stock. Um, but we go under Window, there was, what was it, an extension here. It was called uh, Free Stock Search Pro. And uh, there was just an extension I found, I think it's the free stock search is free and then it's like, I don't know, 20, 30 bucks or something to um, license it. And if you license it, you don't see sponsored ones. So literally this enables me to go through and look at, these are from free stock sites. Like there's Pexels, Pixabay, uh, you know, I think Unsplash is another one on here. And you can just kind of look and try and find images in here so you know like well maybe i like that one so we're just going to click on it it's going to save it let me drop it to the desktop hit save now it's going to download it here we go and to find these you just go let me show you how to get that if you're looking for something like that um it's under the extensions find extensions here we go just click on that and it takes you to adobe exchange that pops open and then um, here on Adobe Exchange, I got to sign in. Hang on, let me do all that first because I, I don't want to put my password on there. 
and then it takes you to exchange it's probably my exchange then we go free stock pro so you just go into the exchange search for that and then you just you know literally just click on it and it will install it so that's um you know how you can get that so there's some other free images and another way to just kind of see if those are going to fit would be control t let's resize this that'd be command t and i'm just going to drag it down and say you know what yeah we know this looks like chicago uh actually is in new york new york is that freedom tower um so anyway we can just go in here and sometimes if we hit the out or option key hit the mask it'll just hide everything this is just another way to just quickly see if it's going to work and then you can just paint the area you want to see with white so i'm just painting on that mask with white this is just another way and you're just like oh is that going to work hmm, i don't know maybe hit the x key and you can kind of just blend it in so we're just doing this kind of quickly just seeing you know i'm just kind of showing you if you wanted to nestle a little bit of a city in here and you know you can change things up of course if there's something recognizable in here like that tower you just paint the tower out and maybe throw some other other buildings in there if you're worried about that you know and we can just start to just kind of blend these in and say okay you know there's some kind of a city gonna go in there awesome let's go and uh let's grab this one this is the one i was looking at before i, I think it was chicago and if you have a account with Adobe Stock, you can license the image. So we just did the free one. And you can do a lot of these just using the free ones. You don't have to license images. Um, you can just, you know, throw together concepts and stuff like that. But I, the thing I like about Adobe Stock is that if I use the free ones and then I find, you know, that I like them or maybe you submit them to a client or, um, or whatever, you know, then you can license it. You just click this little thing here. Uh, the little shopping cart goes in here and I have a few licenses. I have 45 licenses left. I'm going to confirm this. Now it's going to buy it and uh, it's going to download it. And then I can right click and I can choose edit and boom. Now we get that nice full resolution image of that one. And you know what? I licensed the wrong one. So good move there, Colin. Maybe we can use this <laughs> as well. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, I think we can use that in there. So we're just going to build some kind of a cityscape kind of thing. And this is the one I meant to license. So just same thing. Hit that shopping cart. And uh, click in there. Now there's lots of places you guys can get stock. As I showed, you can get the free stock there. You can get stuff from places like uh, Envato. You can get stuff from iStock Photo. Um, there's tons and tons of them. And the thing is, when you license it here, it removes the watermark and it also gives you the high res version. Now, one of the things they change in this library panel that I really hate is you used to be able to double click to open it. Now you got to right click and choose edit. Now if you double click, it gives you details. You click in here, see so it gives you details on the image, which is good, you know, for giving credit to the author and stuff like that. So if you guys want to contribute, you're definitely going to get more credit now than you used to um but i find a little bit of a pain to use but let's go ahead and click on there let's drag that in so what we're doing is this is the classic kit bash right now where we're literally just throwing things at the photo um oh yeah russ has done that before all right so we're, we're doing that right now so let's go in here and uh let's zoom in a little bit closer I feel like this wants to be a little bit bigger, so let's go just a little bit bigger. And uh, Control T, by the way, Command T will give you that access to that. Yeah, so let's try this little tool here and see how it does. That's the object selection tool. Holding down the Shift key will add to the selection, and uh, it's it's okay. Some images it works really well, some images it doesn't work so well. It's just kind of how it is. All right, the quick way to do this is, you know what I'm going to do? Here's a tool that I've actually been using a little bit more in my work, but I never use in tutorials, Magnetic Lasso Tool. This might be a good case for the Magnetic Lasso Tool. 
I'm just going to go over the skyline here. And all you need to do with that is just tap whenever you tap it'll add an anchor point. And it kind of traces things a little bit. I don't want that. So let me hit the, I believe the delete key takes me back one point at a time. Yep, there we go. And then you just tap to force a point. So let me just race through this quickly because I don't want to spend too much time, you know, just cutting things out. But I just want to show you some different tools. How many of you guys use the magnetic lasso tool? Let me know in the comments. And um, here's the Willis Tower. Otherwise, it used to be known as the Sears Tower. That's one of those things you probably would cut out if you were building a map painting. You probably wouldn't put that in there because it's too recognizable. Of course, anyone from Chicago will recognize the skyline. But, you know, if you really wanted to make it cool, you just, you know, you'll mix it up later on. You'll cut out some buildings, you'll remove some buildings, you'll add some buildings. That's what you would do to get it recognizable. Unless, of course, something happened in the future and Chicago became part of the, uh, the Swiss Alps. Okay, that's not grabbing very well. Okay, I'm just going to race. Ah! One of the things about the Wacom tablet sometimes here we go is when you <laughs> when you got touch on sometimes what just happened to me there can happen okay let's do this fast I'm gonna do the polygonal lasso tool so I'm just gonna grab here and all I'm gonna do is just tap I'm just gonna do this really fast I'm not very accurate today feels like it's sticky it's not smooth um, let me try the mouse yeah, the computer's a little laggy, but uh, it's definitely easier with the mouse. The Wacom tablet was getting kind of sticky. It was weird. Probably need to update my driver. Um, I'd be more likely to use Quick Selection Tool. Yeah, you're probably right. The Quick Selection Tool would probably work nicely. The reason I'm using the straight edges is just going to give me better edges because these are all straight edges, but I'm just doing a terribly lousy job on this. Uh, quick selection would probably be okay for what we're doing, to be honest. You're probably right. For something quick like this, I probably should. Let me just go down here. I'm just going to encompass this in the rest of the selection. And let's close that, holding down the shift key. Make sure we're adding to that selection. And yeah, let's do that. You know, for something quick, you know, for a real job, I might use the, you know, like we were there, because that's definitely going to probably give better edges than we're going to get on a quick selection tool. But um, let's try that. Good suggestion. That's working good. Seems like everything's a little bit offset. I don't know if you guys are seeing that on my screen. It's a little odd. Yeah, for a better result, though, I still think, you know, the lasso, polygon lasso tool or the pen tool is going to give you the best result. But you know what? This is going to work, guys. Good suggestion, uh, photo maker. All right, so let's just grab that in there. Actually, you know what? I kind of like that selection there around the building like that. Great. So let's just mask it out, hit the mask. And let's see where we're going to position this. Maybe up here somewhere. And we're just going to zoom in. And we're clearly not going to get that grass like that in the snow. But I'm going to grab a brush. And I'm just going to blend that out. Just painting it away. And then when I need more detail, make the brush a little bit smaller and uh, let's fix it up around that edge just kind of blending it in at the moment okay so maybe that just kind of blends into the building there we go and a nice thing about these kind of things is the bottom you can just blend it in you don't have to um, spend a lot of time getting perfect cutouts for these kinds of things the top needs to be pretty cleanly cut out, but the bottom doesn't. You can just blend it. 
In fact, I don't like the buildings behind here. Let's get rid of those. And we're just kind of building this in a little bit. There we go. Let's zoom out and see how we're, how we're looking. All right, we're starting to get somewhere. Let's clean this one up a little bit. Let's grab the brush. Make sure we're working on the right layer. And I'm going to paint with black. No, I don't. I want to paint with white and bring this back. There we go. And so this is something, you know, you might do for a matte painting for like a movie or something like that, which is kind of what we're sort of going for here. You know, one of those, I don't know, futuristic disaster movie kind of things. I don't know. Dystopian, what do you call them? Kind of fun. I like those kind of sci-fi futuristic kind of things and see how it's kind of working and I think the key to this is just finding stuff that's the right angle I actually like this area here I think this is actually working quite nicely and, uh, and we'll blend it all in a little bit and you'll notice that there's always a lot of like smoke and fog and stuff like that which is nice for um, not only creating an effect but also for saving you a lot of time for blending edges I'm gonna make this a harder edge brush and we're just gonna paint that in there we go showing those edges a little bit better and if you hold down the shift key it'll create a straight line let's flip that around okay it's looking good starting to just blend that so I'm using that harder edge brush right now just to kind of blend in those parts of the buildings that I want to show. A little bit more solid. Let's see what we're doing. Just kind of cleaning it up. Let's hit the X key so we paint with black on that mask. Make the brush smaller and then we can clean up these areas. So sometimes it's easy to just kind of over select and then come back later and just kind of clean these up. Now one of the things I noticed a lot of matte painters um, when I, I went to Noman School of Visual Effects, and one of the things I noticed there, a lot of the matte painters, when it comes to masking, they literally just paint. So these are matte painters that you might see, like people like Dylan Cole that did, uh, you know, the matte paintings for movies like Star Wars. And they literally just paint a lot of their masks. And there we go. And it's kind of fun doing that. And then I'm just kind of painting away the areas I don't want. Let's go up here. And I'm still got that hard edge brush just to kind of chisel things out a little bit. And then you're going to use the softer edge brush for blending. So a hard edge brush is good for cutting things out. Soft edge will blend things in. There we go. So we're starting to just kind of clean that up. And if you go over the edge, hit the X key. Let's fix that. Hit the X again and let's start there. Boom. Let's turn the flow smoothing everything all the way up. Okay, I want to do this with a holding down the shift key. See that? It'll constrain it to that straight line. Let's do the same thing here. Shift key. Constrains it. Alright, so how are you guys doing there? Oh yeah, I'm using a Wacom Intuos Pro. A lot of people ask me what tablet I'm using. That's it here. It's the Wacom into his pro medium um, I, I love it it's a great tablet all right so we've got some stuff going on there I feel like let's have a look and add a little bit more let's hide the other two and what are we gonna do with this I'm just gonna hit the five key with that layer selected the five key is gonna give me 50% opacity and it's just gonna let me see both so I'm just gonna shrink it down a little bit Maybe we'll put some of this in front. Turn on the other ones. And uh, yeah, it's going to work. So why don't we take that suggestion, use the quick selection brush. And this time we're just going to select the sky. Zoom in. 
Eh, it didn't work very well. Let's start the bottom instead. What happens if we try to go this way? So sometimes I try things, and if they don't work, then try something else. Yeah, I think that's going to work a little better this way. I don't want that necessarily that whole horizon there. We can paint some of that out. So we're just kind of just painting some of this in. And I'm just selecting individual buildings because I figure, you know what, let's grab some of those. Let's grab all the stuff in the foreground here. Boom. Great. And let's hit a mask. And uh, now we're starting to build something up with these different cities. So let me hide the other cities so we can just kind of see this one for now. And grab the brush. Maybe it's a little big, but that's okay. Uh, let me just bring it down just a little bit. Shift key. There we go. Yeah, that's looking good. All right, so now I'm just going to grab our brush again, and let's just clean out those areas we don't want. Still chiseling away that hot edge brush. And this is where you might change the brush size, make it small, just go in and clean up these little areas in there. All right. So the first step is just kind of blocking everything out, which is what we're doing right now. We're positioning things, we're getting them in there, we're deciding, hey, what do we want? What don't we want? And then, you know, we'll... We'll match the colors and tones and atmospheric effects and all that kind of stuff in a little bit. So I'm just going pretty rough here. I don't even want that building there in the back. Let's get rid of that. Notice if it's painting like that, just grab your brush and turn off transfer. And when I say painting like that, like it's not painting away 100%. And now it will. So I had pen pressure turned on there. And we're just going to zoom in a little bit here. And so what I'm going to do is just kind of chisel away at these until I get something that's going to look like an edge. And uh, so we're deciding, okay, where are we going to cut this? So let's cut it there. I want to keep that part of the building. Maybe there. We're going to get rid of all that. We're going to start to blend this in. I do like some of the road and stuff, but we can't really have that all in there and have it working right. I mean, well, actually, let's have some of this going in. We can have some of it doing it. And now this is also where, you know, in a little bit, you know, like really good matte artists will start, or matte painters will start to elements in there and start to paint elements and blend them in. Um, we might do a little bit of that. Let's see how we go for time. So I'm just looking at how we're going to blend that in here. I kind of like that. There we go. So we're just looking for a natural points in here that we can use to blend it. So I don't know. Do you guys enjoy doing this kind of work? Personally, I really enjoy it. I find it very um, therapeutic. All right, just kind of building these in. That could be in there maybe. There we go. What I'm doing here is just clicking, holding down the shift key and clicking again to draw a straight line. There we go. And that'll help me get a nice edge without having to put too much work in here. And, uh, and I think we're finding some good break points here, some good edges. All right, I haven't even looked at, you know, matching a light or anything like that yet. Let's. <laughs> Let's have a look at that for a second right now. Um, so let's just quickly look at what's happening with the light. I'm going to create a layer on top. All right, so we can see for our map painting. Let's go here. Let's grab something. I can see the light is coming this way into the mountains. That side's on shadow. That side's getting lit. Let's have a look on the city. Looks like the light is coming from the opposite side. All right, so don't fall in love with those compositions. Sometimes you gotta flip them around. Control T, right click and choose flip horizontal. Okay, now we're gonna get the light coming from the same direction, which is really important. 
and uh, let's get that up there somewhere. Okay, great. All right, let's have a look at the next section that we've got. How's the light working with this one? Well, people really love to shoot cities from with the light coming down the other side. I guess that's when sunset is. All right, so I'm going to click here. I'm going to right click Control T, right click, and choose Flip Horizontal because we want that light to be coming from the same direction as it's hitting the mountain. And we can, we'll move this around. We'll position it exactly how we want it. I'm kind of thinking maybe in there. All right, let's have a look on the other side. And what have we got? Every time a coconut, yep, the light is still coming from the other side. That's amazing. Okay, control T, right click, flip horizontal and uh but i like the way that was kind of nestling into the building so this is where we start to experiment so we could have these kind of going in there like that let's hide this and see how it would look going into the other side like maybe building going into the mountain there that could sort of work but are we going to get away with this so this is where the experimentation part comes in let's have a look Let's move them around. We don't need that anymore. So this is where the, um, and that's why, you know, you don't spend too much time perfecting all of these early on because you might have to move things around like we are. And then maybe we'll throw that in the foreground here. It's kind of starting to work. Let's put that behind the other one. Not worried about matching tones yet we'll get to all that okay so that goes behind we'll get a little bit more the city is kind of not quite working i really like this uh, of course the other thing i could have done is i could have flipped the whole background so let's try that let me just undo this a couple more times let's go back to where we were and uh this is where we were so what happens if we go and instead control J and we flip the background right click flip horizontal and uh, that's gonna enable us to keep it so what do you guys think do you like it better with the background going this way and everything matching like that or did you like it better the other way let me know Let me know. First, I'm going to undo it a couple of times. We're going to stick with this kind of direction. I think it looks better to me. So I'm just going to undo this a few more times. And what's everyone thinking? The original way? Yeah. Okay. That's what I figured. Okay. So we've got this sitting here. I think that's looking good. We've got the light coming in the right direction. That's working. Let's grab our little city here. We've got to flip that back around again. Control T, right click, flip horizontal. And let's put that, make sure it's behind the other part. And you know, that could go up here, something like that. Sort of gonna work. Okay. And let's do this part. Let's grab our city, make sure, control T, we flip it around, flip horizontal. Making sure that lighting direction is matching. And I think it's a little big, so let's control T, let's bring that down a little bit. And maybe we can start to position it there. That's sort of working. And see what we're doing, we're just kind of building things up a little bit. Control T, I'm going to make that one a little bit bigger. And, uh, yeah. See, now we're starting to get somewhere. And what I want to do, though, is I want to put something in the front here. I want to have some water. So what we want to find is some kind of water here that we can pop in there. And, uh, and let's do this. So I hope you guys are enjoying this. This is something a little bit different, um, 
this week. Let me know if you're finding this enjoyable. Uh, let me try and see what we've got in a free stock. Let's just look at Ocean. And uh, under the Ocean, E-A-N. Let's see if I've got anything that we might be able to use. Hmm. Well, that's kind of interesting. Although with the dramatic color, it might be tricky. All right, you guys are liking this? Great, oh, that's good. I'm glad you're enjoying it and it's fun. So this is literally the process that I go through when I'm creating um, you know, a concept art or a composite. Um, this one looks kind of interesting. Let's have a look at this, see if we can use it. I'm not worried about colors, if the colors match or don't match. I'm not worried about that at all at this point of time. Okay, so I want to make this a little bit bigger. And I'm just wondering how this is going to work for scale. So let me just hit the 5 key and we're going to bring that down. So the ocean's going to kind of go in here. So now what we want to do is show everything. So we're going to choose image, reveal all. Here we go. And this, guys, is why I didn't crop this to a 16.9 at the beginning. Remember at the beginning I said don't crop it yet. Wait till you start building out your composition. Yeah, don't don't crop your image until you know what you're going to be doing with it because, you know, I could have made that narrower and then what would I be doing with this? All right, so let's see what happens if I just thingy bob that in there, blend it in. That's what I mean. This great a gradient. Sometimes you know when you're working, um, your brain goes blank when it comes to things like words. You, you don't necessarily think of the right words. Here we go. So this is where we can start to maybe blend it in like this. So now we're starting to get, you know, a waterfront kind of thing. Let me blend it in there and maybe bring it up a little bit. Okay, so let's have a look. Try it there. It's not bad but you know what I want is I want the water to be smaller so we've got an issue here with scale so this is how I get around those kind of things is I'm literally going to duplicate this hit control T for free terms form and I'm going to make it smaller and then I'm going to bring that up and I'm going to put that on the water hold down the outer option key and I'm just going to drag out copies of it And then all I got to do is just blend all these together. So let's grab the brush, make it nice and big. I want to make sure that pressure sensitivity is turned on right now for transfer for print pressure. I could find another photo and sometimes I'll do that, you know, like I'll try this kind of thing. And, you know, if it doesn't work, soft edge brush is what we want. Then I might find a different, you know, image to use. So we're just kind of blending this together. Watch those edges. Um, I just want to see if it's going to kind of work like this. Why don't we grab that? Just starting to just kind of blend this together and just seeing what do you think guys is this going to work or is that not going to work it's not bad um i'm not super thrilled with it so let's see what else we've got here what about something like this and this is where you know don't become married you know when you're doing the concept work don't become married to an idea like what we're doing is just working quickly and loosely right now because we're just trying out ideas. We're bashing. So let's go in there. We're going to grab our gradient tool, blend that in. You know what? I think that's working a lot better. And it's definitely something we can use. Now, of course, you'd want to go in here and you would want to license this image um, if you want the high resolution, which I think I will. 
Um, I'm going to do that. Just I'm going to choose license asset from the properties panel. And I'm going to do that because I, I might, you know, create a nice final of this. If I wasn't doing that, I wouldn't waste my time, um, you know, licensing the images. I would just, you know, use the watermark versions and, and just, there we go. So what it does, by the way, notice what happened there is when I licensed it, it removed the watermark and it also replaced it with the high resolution image, which is really nice. It's one of the nice things about working with this. So I'm going to get rid of all these because those clearly did not work, but this is working a lot better. And uh, let's just pull it up a little bit. There we go. And I want to do a more abrupt transition. So let's go in with our little tool here, our gradient tool, and just make it much more abrupt. How far can I go actually? Let's have a look about there. Okay, there we go. And then what we do is just paint this in again. Keep going with the painting. So now we're just brushing in here. Maybe we want this to come out a little bit more. Got to watch it though. Let, let me just show you a little thing I do sometimes is I'm just going to put a guide there so I know how far I can go. So I don't want to go beyond there. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a selection around here. Command Shift I, invert it. So now I can paint in here and I'm not going to go past that point. Um, probably should move it up a little bit. Let me do that with a selection tool active. I can actually, I'm going to pull that selection up. So let me grab a selection tool there and now I can move the selection. See that? And the reason I'm doing that is I want to give myself a little headroom. So I don't want to brush right up to that edge. All right, let's go back into the mask here. And now I can just kind of, with a smaller brush, start to blend in parts, other parts of the image. See what we're doing here? We're making it look a little bit more. Is that the edge right there? It was not very accurate, but I think you guys understand what I was trying to do. And I'm just kind of blend that in. So maybe, what would you guys do? Maybe I would bring this up just a little bit higher, give myself a little bit more room to play with. And what we're doing here is just kind of, you know, I don't want all this just to be flat. Because it looked kind of boring. That bit there could go up and down a little bit. Put a little wave in here and there. You know, so the I think it looks a little better that way. There we go. And we might put some little bit of haze or something along there in a little bit. All right, we're starting to get somewhere now. And, uh, you know, we're starting to build this up. So let's just go in here a little bit and start to blend in the city better. So we're gonna start with this part of the city and now we're going to use the soft edge brush and with the soft edge brush we can start to blend these areas in see what we're doing just blending these in and i gotta be honest with you this is one of the my favorite parts of the composite is when you get to do this here you just get to go in there and just explore the city it's like for me i just get into the city and just you know i might be listening to some music which is what i would normally be doing in fact, I, I'm allowed to use um, Epidemic Sound. I have a license there. I'm allowed to use that for streaming, so I could play it, but uh, you guys probably don't want to listen to me listening to music, but maybe Bruce will sing for us or play us a song. By the way, Bruce has a massive collection of guitars. Don't know if you guys knew that, but Bruce is a guitar collector. And of course, he plays as well. How many of you other guys play instruments? Let me know who plays musical instruments. What do you play? Let us know in the comment there. And uh, clearly that's weird, so I'm just going to paint over it. See so what we're doing? We're just kind of fixing up these edges. And I'm going to pick up the pace just a little bit for you guys here. But you get you get the general idea of, of what I'm doing. Um, when I do this you know, on an actual project, I'm clearly going to take a little more time. Okay, so what we want to do is make sure around this area, 
we've got to go back into the water hit the X key and make sure we have oh, not that there we go make sure we have something solid there on the edges where the buildings are going because <laughs> we don't want those buildings going directly into the water I mean we could Let's see what we're doing there just kind of building that up a little bit and now with the smaller brush we can kind of get in and start to get a little bit more detailed so we're starting to move into that level now where we're just starting to finesse things a little bit more um which you know we'll, we'll get close but we're definitely not going to take the time to get this all the way up to a production you know quality result but we'll We'll get we'll get it something decent here. All right, let's go into the other city. There we go. And just get in there and just now it's a matter of just cleaning things up. Just gonna smaller with the brush. Hit the X key, paint it back, and then this is where you would just kind of go in and just do that that kind of fun stuff. I'm not gonna do every little edge because that would not be thrilling for you guys. But I just want to show you, you know, essentially what we're doing so you can get the general idea. I don't want that stuff in the background. It makes no sense here. And so this is the nice thing about doing something that is, um, you know, doesn't really exist. Is that we don't have to be accurate as far as, you know, certain buildings have to be there. And in certain places we can be loose with this. And it uh, doesn't matter. Because no one's going to say that's not realistic because the whole thing's not realistic. Uh, so what do we got here? French horn. Deborah plays. Used to play French horn. Um, and let's have a good... How big is the canvas? I'll have a look in a little bit. Um, issues of uh, piracy. Yes. You gotta be careful with piracy. Uh, what's that with? Uh, oh, Google Image. Yeah, that's the thing. If you just use a Google Image, there's no need to use Google Images because the thing is, if just because you find an image on Google Search, which is a great question, I'm glad you brought that up, Weeds. Um, is just because you find an image on Google doesn't mean that you have the right to use it. And many people have been sued. Sometimes, you know, if you're lucky, it's just going to be a takedown order. But, you know, that would suck. You know, if you put all this work into something and then you get a takedown notice and you've got to remove it. Um, because you don't have the rights to use it, which is why, you know, if you don't want to spend money, use one of the free stock sites. It's just as easy to search there and you have the, the rights to use it. So you have a license, um, you know, and then if you're doing a commercial project that, you know, you're making money from and you're selling it, then, you know, use something like Adobe Stock or um, iStock Photo, you know, these, these kind of places for that. Or even better is use your own images and um, using your own images has an advantage because if you're doing like a, a contest like a, some of these contests you know photo contests compositing contests sometimes they require all the images be your own so um, that's another reason why you might want to use your own images I'm just getting rid of that color I didn't didn't like that I could desaturate the color in here too if I wanted but I'm just doing this the quickest the easiest way and remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, one of the things they taught me at visual effects school is it only has to be good enough to sell it to the audience. Um, in fact, anything beyond that is just a waste and it's outside of the budget. So when you see the movies, the 3D rendering, nothing is ever rendered at the highest possible quality because it just doesn't make sense for a budget point of view. So also, you know, you've got to consider that you know if you're doing it for fun take your time don't worry about all these kind of things um, you know as far as how long it takes but if you're doing it you know as a job and you're trying to make money then you want to be working quickly and not wasting time um, on things that don't need to be uh, focused on here we go 
So anyway, so that was one of the one of the things I learned there. What are my takeaways? All right, so I'm just gonna kind of do a couple more of these, just kind of get rid of those ghosted buildings in the background, and then we're gonna kind of start to do something else. But see what we're starting to do now? We're getting these to a good spot. Now I might consider, you know, doing something like a you know, dropping in some airplanes or helicopters or things like that would be kind of fun. But what I want to do now is I want to crop this down to a 169 aspect ratio. Someone was asking me what size my canvas is. Let's we'll get to that in a, right now. Let's choose the canvas. And what I want to do is I'm going to choose a 16 by 9, which is a standard, you know, HD kind of a format. Um, you know, widescreen. You know, you might have different you know, you might go a little wider if you want. These these are all options. Uh, but what I'm going to do is not delete the crop pixels. Now, let me just talk about that for a second. If I turn on delete crop pixels, it will actually reduce the size of the image. And it will get rid of um, all the other stuff, but it won't allow me to move it later on. So if I don't turn on delete crop pixels and I apply that crop, what that does is it crops it down to this window but everything is still here so see see if that doesn't cut it off so if i want to reposition things it's going to enable me to do that all right so we're starting to just kind of get there a little bit um let's not even worry about like the small details right now airplanes you know birds all these kind of fun things that you might want to do what i want to do now is i want to start to match the tone and the color so the next thing we want to do is just create a black and white adjustment layer on top. So let's just go under here and we're going to choose a black and white adjustment layer. Now we want to name these as this C. Let's just do the building middle. I'm just going to call this middle just so we know what it is. Left. And we've got the right. All right, so we can kind of build those up so we know where they, those are. What does the black and white layer does? It enables me to mix the, to blend the tones together. Because right now, you know, if I look at the color, the color is going to distract me. And I'm just looking at the contrast at the moment. So first of all, let's have a look at the water. So I'm going to create an adjustment layer. I'm going to create a curves adjustment layer. Levels would also work quite nicely for this kind of thing. And I'm just going to see, hey, what looks better? Notice it's affecting everything right now. Well, actually, it's just affecting the mountain. I'm going to leave that mountain where it is. I want to do the water. So what I'm going to do, if I do this, it's going to affect the whole image. See that? Don't want to do that at this point. So what I want to do is see that little icon. If you click that, it will clip it to the layer underneath. And now it only affects the layer underneath. So what I want to do is I'm matching the contrast with the Matterhorn there. And let's see how that looks. Not worried about the color right now, just the tone. All right, it sort of works. In fact, why don't we hide everything else and we can just look at this on its own and see what you guys think. How about a submarine? James Bond scene. I like that idea, John. Yeah, so I'm, what I'm doing is I'm just looking at these. I'm trying to match them. It's, it's not always easy. But I think there's definitely some brighter areas needed there. There we go. All right. Let's move now to the middle. So with that middle city selected, let's grab a curves adjustment. And I ended up for levels. I love it when that happens. Click on curves. There we go. And now what do we want in the shadows there? Do we want those shadows darker? Make sure we're clipping it. So we're just affecting ours. I feel like I want those shadows open a little bit. So I'm just looking at this, comparing it with the building. There's a shadow, there's a highlight. So we don't have strong, strong shadows in the other one, but we do have some brighter highlights. So I want to make sure we hit those. 
And notice without the color to distract us, hopefully we're going to get a better job than we would if we had a lot of color. Let's grab the mid-tone. All right, that works for me. Let's go to this part of the city. Let's do the same thing. Grab a curves adjustment. Um, now, there's lots of different ways of doing this. How would you guys do it? I feel like I need a little bit more shadow in there, so I'm going to pull the shadows down. It's okay for it to be a little fading as it goes into the distance because that's atmospheric perspective, so I'm cool with that. Um, let's give it some little lighter areas. Okay, it looks like it's starting to blend in a little better. Let's do this part and see what you guys said here. Colin on the back of the yellow duck. The yellow duck? Um, of course, I'm jumping into the middle of the conversation. Plastic duck. Okay, there we go. Oh, so you guys want a plastic duck, a real big plastic duck with me uh, on the back of it. That would be funny. Okay, so let me clip that. I'm looking at this part of the city now. Let's make sure we brighten it up. There we go. All right, I think that's looking better as far as, you know, the tones. We've still got stuff to do, of course, to blend this in and a lot of stuff to make this look better. But let's turn on our color. All right, so we can see we're sort of getting there now with the background. This water is clearly way, way too blue. So let's go um, and we're just going to do a hue saturation adjustment. And we want to clip that just to the water. And let's take that saturation down. Uh, there we go. That's looking a lot better. All right. So see what we're doing now as we're trying to get that. Now let's visualize this the other way to see how things are going. So if we go under the, um, I believe it's under the view menu and we can choose flip horizontal. So what this does is it just enables you to look at the composition from a different angle. And uh, yeah, now, now I'm seeing some issues that didn't really notice before. See how we're just kind of looking at it and I feel like the balance is a little bit off over here. And you don't necessarily see that when you're working on it um, just at one angle. So what if we move this over a little bit more? So I feel like that's helping it a little bit in the composition. Let's move that over a little bit too. Okay, and then we just flip that back. So that's one thing a lot of people don't do. And see when we flip that, it just gave us a, a different perspective, a different viewpoint. And see how now it's spread out a little bit more. I feel it looks, it looks better. I think that actually helped us. In this part here, I feel like the angle is slightly off. So I'm gonna try something here. What we're going to do is we're going to use the transform. So we're going to hit control. Let me see how we do this one. We go under the edit and we're going to use perspective warp. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is we need to define the planes of how this is going. Um, okay. Let's see how we do with this. You know, another thing I see we need to do before we even do that is I want to do a warp. I notice it's kind of warping out. So before we even do that, let's hit control T, right click, and I'm going to use the perspective tool and just drag these in a little bit. Oh, there we go. See that? That might actually, I think that looks better. I don't think we necessarily even have to use the perspective warp, but I'll show you what I was going to do with it. With that selected, if we choose the edit and then we choose perspective warp, um, this can change the angle of the, the way we're looking at this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the front of this right here. So let's set the front of this. Whoa. Let's drag that over. And what we're doing is we're setting the perspective on the front of our city here. I'll pull it down a little bit. And then what I want to do is add a second part. Is this going to work? Who knows? 
and I want to just kind of pull that down. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of setting the perspective over the city. I don't know if we need to do this, but you know, we, we're going to try this. And now if I choose the warp, we can um, literally, we can change the perspective, but that's weird. It's supposed to be showing right now. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to undo this because it was, there's a bug. But what I was going to do is kind of squeeze that to kind of change the angle so it looked like we weren't quite looking down on it so much. To kind of get it more upright. Um, so we can still do this if I right click. Let's go into scale. Actually, we could probably just scale the top down. If I hold the shift key. There we go. So I'm just changing the angle to look a little better. And I think that's looking better. What do you guys think? that angle definitely starting to get things a bit more exciting all right so the next thing you might do is some kind of a color effect but before I do that let's grab our brush and now we're gonna grab our clouds and for those of you guys who don't have the cloud brush that I'm about to use you can grab that from the vault if you're already signed up on a mailing list just go to the last email I sent you not the introduction to this but uh, regular email at the bottom you'll see there's a link there to the vault and you can come in there and grab all the accessories for free and one of those is the brush if you haven't signed up for our mailing list um, just go to photoshopcafe.com forward slash vault v-a-u-l-t and then you can find the vault there with our brushes and then we're going to have the brush I'm about to use so let's go down here and I want to use our cloud brushes and these are great for, you know, they've got lots of uses, but uh, they're also good for, you know, just blending things together. And uh, kind of dab here and just sort of start to, let me drop the opacity of that down a little bit. And we're just creating, so you can almost make it look like the edge of, you know, where the surf might be. And I'm just kind of painting very, very small here. And I'm just going for the edge. And then we'll we'll do another pass where we start to drop the opacity down. But I just want to kind of show you guys how I might use this brush to just kind of blend things in a little bit. So this might be the surf breaking or, or whatever, you know. And we're just kind of getting those edges. I just want to go all the way around here. And I'm just kind of painting this a little bit random. Oh, we'll darken the clouds. Don't worry, we're going to do different shades of the clouds in a little bit. Um, that was FT. Yeah. So I just want to just kind of just go around the edge here just with a white kind of giving us a surf kind of thing and then we're going to go in and we're going to blend in like different tones and things like that give it some depth I think I'm getting a little lazy right now okay so let's go back over here and just see what's starting to happen see how we're starting to bring that in and now what I'm going to do is make these a little bigger I'm going to start to darken them up put some different tones in here and uh, I'm going to bring the opacity down. We've got the flow down. I'm going to hit shift one, bring it down. Uh, opacity down to, let's do th a three of 30% opacity. Oh, that's weird. Everything's reversed. That's really weird. Okay. So usually the shift key adjusts the flow. Ah, is that because I got the airbrush on? There we go. Okay, so shift one will give me 10% and then three is going to give me the opacity there so what I'm doing is just kind of blending that in so I've got a flow a very low flow a low opacity and then I'm just going to start to blend in this with some different let me show you what's going on we get a little bit closer you know we're not going to be able to spend a ton of time doing the whole thing but let me do just some of it just kind of showing you what we're doing we're starting to build up the uh, clouds here so I'm going with a darker cloud right now and a lower opacity 
And let's go back over here so you guys can see what I'm doing. And I'm building that up bigger. And then what we're going to do is the next pass, we're going to get a little bit lighter. And maybe a little smaller. And see what we're doing now, it's starting to build up a little bit more of that kind of haze. And I'm, I'm going to go really fast just because of time. So I think you guys get the general idea of what I'm doing. And then you're just slowly starting to blend this in. Usually it's going to take a, several passes. And each pass that we do, things are going to get a little bit more realistic. Go here. I'm going to drop my opacity down to 20%. Maybe go a little bit bigger. And now we're adding more. See, See how it's building up? And then you're just going to keep doing this. And I want this actually to start going up here more. And then that's going to start to build some of that. Because usually where the water is kind of hitting, it starts to get this way. You know, you get that haze of that water as it's, um, you know, it's not necessarily the spray, but, you know, it starts to evaporate and just different kind of things. You'll Or condensation, you know, just... You know, the water is a different temperature than the land. So as it hits, you know, just different things happen. And see what we're starting to do here. We're starting to get a little bit. And then you might build up like certain areas, maybe getting a little bit more. I think you guys start to see what's happening. I'm probably being a little too subtle just, you know, for the time we've got. And then so I would build that up. And see how we're starting to get something there. Now it's starting to look like, um, you know, a shoreline. You know, I, I've grown up by the sea and by lakes. And, you know, you start to see a lot of that stuff. And then the other thing I would do with this is I would start to drop a little bit more of this haze now with that cloud brush into the distance. So we're starting to put a little distance into that city there. It's going to start to put some depth in here. Maybe a little bit back there. A little bit there, not too much. And we're starting to just build a little bit of that, maybe near the top of the city. Well, it definitely let the top of the mountain peak out. But see how this can just really... Um, just gives us that little bit of atmosphere. It gives us a little bit more realism. And we're starting to get better. And now I want to do something with color. So why don't we go and just apply a solid color over the top of everything. I'm going to choose solid color and let's try a bluish hue. We'll, we'll play around with this, but we're going to change this into color blend mode. And um, we could also use a gradient map at this point. And then we're just going to start to build some of this in. See how what that does is it starts to unify everything. It's pulling it together as far as the color and the tone. Um, let me just, I'm going to race through this. So I'm going to create another layer and we do just a quick dodge and burn. And I'm going to do this super fast just to show you how it would work. Um, so let me just hit the B for the brush. And now I'm just going to go to a regular brush. And this is where you can start to, you know, kind of sculpt the image. So I've got that layer. I'm going to set it to overlay. And now you might do a little bit more of the shadows on the sides here. I'm going to just do this a little faster than I normally would. Once again, I just want to kind of just build things up. Um, so let's just do a little bit in the sky here. First of all, just kind of darkening things down, get it a little bit more moody because what's a matte painting without mood, right? So let's get that nice and dark. Same thing with the water, the foreground water. Let's get that nice and dark. And just start to blend it in. There we go. What that's doing is just leading the eye into the brightest part of the image. Which is going to be here. There we go. And now, you, you know, this is something I'm just going to do so fast here. But normally I would spend a lot more time on this. Like probably a good half hour or an hour even. But I just want to show you just basically what we're doing as we start to build up this shadow. It's going to give us some mood and it's going to tie everything together. 
And I'm basically putting the shadow on the right hand side of everything. And you might even see where it hits the rocks, you would have shadow go there, you know, where the buildings are hitting. Especially in the crevices there, the nook and cranny kind of thing. See that there? Now it starts to really set it into the into the cliff. And uh, you know, do the same here. Once again, you know, we're not gonna have the time to really dig into this, but get the general idea try to put some shadow in some of these darker areas a little bit more shadow and see how it can just really just make it look like okay now it's starting to be part of that maybe a shadow going across the building and then other things you might get like sometimes you get some cloud shadow so you might get you know just a little cloud shadow in different places little patches same with the water, you know, you're going to get these little cloud shadow kind of things going on. And as we start to do things with the color and um, and the tone, see how it's the more we do this, the more it starts to bring this together as an image. Um, then I'm going to flip this around and now we're going to start to paint with some light. So maybe we've got some light hitting some things. Yeah, once you start doing this, as you guys are starting to see the difference, yeah. So, so sometimes you're working on something and you're like, oh man, it doesn't look good. You just got to be patient. And, you know, when you get to these kind of steps, this is where the magic really starts to happen. But, you know, you've got to get there. <laughs> um, so anyway, so I'm just kind of putting a little light on the forward facing things here. A little bit here. And I'm really rushing through this. I would normally spend a lot more time on this part because it's, it's fun. It's real fun doing this part. You know the light and shadow painting it in and normally you know I'll be a lot lot more detailed with this okay starting to get there and uh, you know we've still got more work we can do one of the things I like to do sometimes too is just like literally just just go over the top I'm gonna to create a new layer and I'm gonna call it Atmo, and this will be, you know, some atmosphere. So let's go back to our cloud brush again. Let's grab our cloud brush. Once again, guys, you can grab these cloud brushes from photoshopcafe.com forward slash vault. And let's just see what happens here. I'm going to go big, big cloud now. And I want to just kind of really start to just kind of fuck things up a little bit in the foreground. Maybe go darker. And I'm a little bigger than I normally would be on this brush. Actually, let me undo this a few times. I'm not just going to overlay mode. That's what's going on. There we go. And I'm just kind of fogging things up a little bit with this brush. Sorry for the noise, but I'm just tapping. And let's make it a little bit brighter. Maybe this part of the image, we're going to brighten it up. There we go. And I'm just going to brighten this area because this is the, the hero part of the image. So we're going to let that kind of light up. Maybe even coming out of the sky, we've got this, the light coming here. You know, if it's too much, we can undo this, of course. All right, so we're starting to get what we're looking for as far as the mood. See that? It gives us that overlay kind of atmosphere. It's too much atmosphere. So we just wind it back and then just dial it in. Let's dial in as much as we want. Now, here's another thing I might do, guys, um, is I'm just going to create a stamp visible. So Control-Shift-Command-E will create a layer on top that has everything in it. And what this is going to allow me to do is to go into camera raw. So we're going to choose filter, camera raw filter. And now we're in here, we can do some adjustments that we can just kind of um, pull things together a little bit. So, you know, I definitely, I don't like the way this is blending here into the ocean. That's something I would definitely have to work on a little bit. But let's have a look here and just see what we get with the color. See, so if we go this way, we get a different look altogether. Which is kind of cool. Let's see what happens. Choose our highlights. We're going to pull those highlights all the way back. 
shadows gives it a bit more detail now we're going to pull that down let's go black we go we want to go dark because we're going for that kind of movie kind of a feel give it a little puff of texture not too much and i'm going to take the saturation down and maybe pump the vibrance just to see how it looks no i don't like that let's try it the other way let's pull the vibrance down and up the saturation a little bit i think that's kind of interesting and so if we look at this before and after see we can get two completely different feels um let's go back more towards the cooler a little bit so what do you guys like do you like the cooler or do you like the warmer let me know what you prefer um so we've got that cool kind of a look and then we've got that it's a different definitely more detailed it's a very different kind of a look um and then the other thing we could do is grab this is pull it down to darken this um people like it cooler everyone likes it cooler all right makes sense okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna grab the eraser and then i just want to paint out from the top of the mountain so what we're doing here is went a little too far let's turn on auto mask and i just want to kind of get in there so this is something i might do here is apply this over the top even though a lot of people like it the other way but what we can do here is we can change this into a, like an overlay blending mode bring opacity all the way down and we can just kind of bring it in just to bring that contrast from it see what we're doing there and you know the other thing you can do is you can blend it so if you don't like it across the whole image you could apply a gradient and uh, and apply it that way so that gives you another option what i'm going to do with this is i'm just going to alt option and just get rid of it all and i just want to use this around the edges so i'm going to use the white and then i'm going to use this um kind of as a like a vignette but instead of being a regular vignette we're creating it from that adjustment that we did there so see what we're doing we're just letting it kind of painting it in selectively where we want it but this is an overlay mode so it's not changing the color it's just increasing the drama in the sky or wherever we decide to paint it all right guys so i guess as far as time that's that's where we're at um so that was kind of you know something i, I wanted to throw together i mean it's not you know 100 percent perfect i definitely need to work a lot more on the shoreline and then you know add in some other elements like some helicopters or planes a central point of focus like maybe a plane or a helicopter flying into the into that area you know from this particular view in fact let's have a look and see if i can quickly find one or um you know just a dragon you know anything in there let's just have a look i want to close it up but let me just see if i have something i can throw in there just to kind of lead the eye in to sh kind of show you what i was thinking um oh that'd be kind of cool hold on so wh watch what happens when you drop in some things like this so let's grab the select subject you know then once you start dropping in some other elements like this you know we can start to uh make it look kind of even cooler because now we've got areas that you know things that are kind of bringing you know a little bit more into composition i still want something large flying in towards that area well that's cool and sometimes you can do something crazy like this i'm just curious what it would look like as an overlay just just quickly showing you guys some things you could do uh choose a soft light and then just blur this just for the just to get the tones out of it i'm just going to blur this a lot there we go and see what i'm doing with this here is before after and see what i'm doing i'm just literally using this for its tones and i'm using that as a way to kind of color tone that see what we're doing if i option click that's what we're getting on the layer but just putting that little bit in there can just boom can add a lot to it um let me just see 
do we have let me just do one quick search and if we don't find it we're just going to move on um and finish let's just see what we can get okay those do not look like aircraft to me um what do we got yeah we've got some but i want them going the other way i'd rather see them from behind uh, maybe something like this because it kind of what this does it brings to mind like you know like jurassic park you know the opening scene of jurassic park and then we go in here and then we'll just use a blend mode maybe to get rid of this and uh, we can just get rid of that background quickly using that blend mode get something up there ah see now this is what we need something like this is gonna just pull the composition together and uh yeah it's clearly not perfect but see when we start to do something like this it's bringing the eye in it's leading the eye in now we're starting to get somewhere with that composition um and uh maybe bring it down under here bring it down under the vignette yeah so see what we're doing we're starting to lead the eye in and now you can start to do maybe a little bit more it's a little too big and these are kind of the things you know that that make a big difference that's now too big let's make it smaller yeah so anyway guys um <laughs> It's kind of, uh, you know, kind of thing we can do here, just kind of kicking around, you know. If you like this, by the way, do me a favor, hit that like button, and this will be available as a um, replay. So when we finish this out, you guys can watch the replay at any time. I know we went a little bit longer than we did. Can we use levels with the city, make it more further? Yeah, we could. Um, you know, there's a lot of different things we can do with this. You know, we could add some atmosphere to it. You know, we can start to blur things as they go into the distance. Um, you know, this is probably something I might spend three or four hours on, you know, to get it how I really want it. So, you know, I just wanted to kind of give you guys, you know, just an, an, an idea of the process we're kind of working through. And let me know if this is the kind of stuff you like. If you want to see more of these kind of things, you know, for some of our life from lockdowns, let me know. Um, you know, if that's something you guys would want. But anyway, thanks, guys. Um, you know, merge or flatten layers. No! No, Paul. No, you do not want to merge or flatten layers. Um, you want to save this out as it is right now. Let me just do this right now. File, save as. Oh, let me tell you how big this is. It's 10,000 pixels by 6,000 pixels so let's just call this uh let me save it out quickly and uh and the reason you would not want to flatten this is you know i can work on this i can continue to improve it um you know i've clearly got work to go you know particularly on the bottom here i still you know on the left it starts to look better you know you can see where we started to blend it in with the clouds it's looking better there um, we still need a lot of work in the middle. We need a lot of work on the right side. Uh, but then, you know, once I look at this with fresh eyes, there's things I'm going to see. And that's another thing is you let it go. You go take a lunch break or, you know, even let it sit overnight and look at it. And you're going to and you're going to continually changing things. So never flatten it unless you absolutely have to. Um, if you want to share it, just choose file save as and save a JPEG of it. But what you don't want to do, um, as I was saying here, yeah flatten no 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 you guys definitely don't want to do that oh bruce is going to key west well good for you bruce um so anyway guys hey thanks for watching uh let me hit that end screen thing so if you guys haven't subscribed consider hitting that subscribe button turn on notifications you won't miss a video from me and by the way if you want to be notified of these live streams the only way to do that is to go to photoshopcafe.com Go under where it says free tutorials, choose live streams, and you'll see a sign up there specifically for the live stream. Make sure you click that and then you'll know about the live stream. If you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, 
I'll see you guys at the cafe. Yeah, and of course I'm back. So, um, any questions, guys? You know, I'm happy to take take a couple of questions. But, uh, yep, uh, Rod Shelley's got drives full of PSDs. I'm glad, Louise, this helped you. Um, thanks, Bruce. Um, funky Place, Key West. Yeah, I, funny story about that. Maybe I'll share it sometime. Uh, basically, I got there. How much for a signed copy? There you go. Um... Uh, oh, thanks, Russ. Good to see you, man. Good to see you, David Hallstock. This is me more convinced that compositing is the thing to do in Photoshop, and we just see so many other things, of course. Yeah, compositing is fun, guys. Um, Sandy, instead of a fix my photo, maybe we could send a photo from what we've learned and see what people come up with. That's a great idea, Sandy. So why don't you guys uh, upload... Uh, you know, play around for composite, maybe something like this or your own, and upload it. And next week I'll share some of you guys' composites. Good idea, Sandy. So if you guys want me to do that, just go to fixmyphoto.net and upload it. Just just send a JPEG for your composite. That should be fine. And uh, great idea. Um, you got it, Jason. I'm glad. Uh, put some flames on the blimp. Yeah, Joe, we're definitely, you know, there's a lot of things, you know, we could do with this. A um, lot of places we could go, you know, atmospheric effects. Um, you know, we could run Boris effects on here and start to turn some lens flares and some different things like that would be good too. Um, definitely a lot more stuff. Um, so glad you guys enjoyed it. Um, I usually just save them as JPEGs and post on galleries. Yeah, I always keep the PSD is your working file and then just save out a JPEG for sharing and do stuff um, art history and the history brush sometimes I do uh, Dana um, yeah sometimes I do not that often these days but sometimes I do um, see you later Karen um, you got it see ya Edgar video perspective oh that's, that's a cool idea yeah see ya see ya Rolf thanks for that Jess um Photo maker, do you ever done a list that includes a select focus area? Um, I th might have. Um, okay, upload on fix my photos so and what would come up. If yeah, do it, guys, and don't forget put your name into the um, file name so we know it's yours, and I can credit you. Like per per perspective tools and stuff. Yeah, sometimes just um, let's let's look at some of that. Yeah, good suggestion. Cause that's your weakness. Got it. Uh, stay safe. You too, Chris. Uh, see you guys. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'm going to jet out of here. I'll post this probably on Instagram or something and Facebook, Twitter. So make sure you follow us at Photoshop Cafe. And uh, you guys can uh, see the final result. So let's go back to the screen. That's what we have. Um, select it. Yeah. So much for that. And then hit the F key. A couple of times takes us into presentation mode and that's it guys that's what we came up with in an hour or so so see you guys thanks